Hey, welcome back to Business 150, Introduction to Management. This is now video number six in module number one as we kick off our look this semester at what is management. And in this video, what we're talking about are different types of roles that managers need to play. Now, we're not talking about Shakespeare. We're not talking about a movie. We're talking about functional roles and responsibilities that a manager has to manage and fulfill, sometimes multiple roles simultaneously. Do you see here from the title slide, this is what we're talking about today, management roles. Now, when we talk about management roles, let's see if we can help you that by the end of this video, be able to identify the major roles that managers fulfill on a regular basis and identify some examples of effective and ineffective role execution. Let's see if we can explain that a little better. Uh, by the end of the video, we should be able to circle the wagons and you should have better understanding what we're talking about here. So when we talk about different managerial roles, we are primarily talking about roles in three big categories. And so there are a set of roles that have to do with interpersonal management, management of other people, right? And you can see there that some of those things look like a figurehead or a leader or a liaison, or it could be in the second category in the middle there, informational roles. In other words, managing information, either as an information monitor or disseminating information to folks inside the organization, or as a spokesperson to the outside world. And that's different, of course, than the third category of roles on the right, decisional roles like an entrepreneur, even within large organizations. Sometimes a manager has to be thinking about new innovative ways to make changes, and that would be an entrepreneurial role, or a disturbance handler, trying to make wise decisions and executing those decisions, how to handle disturbances sometimes within the organization or with external parties outside of the organization. Additional decisional roles include being a resource allocator, trying to make decisions how to allocate scarce resources or to negotiate with parties who are not agreeing with one another. May it be two employees who just don't seem to get along or two divisions who are arguing over how much money you need for next year's budget. You can see there that the first column, interpersonal roles, primarily involves dealing with other people. Informational roles primarily has to do with involving the processing of information. And decisional roles primarily has to do with relating to making decisions. Now, all of these roles, there are 10 roles in this slide. All of these roles are important. And one of the things that I want to tell you is that depending on your functional area as a manager, what you're overseeing, as well as your level within the organization, whether you're a front, first line manager or whether you're the chief executive officer, that will have a great deal of bearing upon which of these roles you have to fulfill and execute more fre frequently than others. For instance, if I go back to this slide, if you're a first line manager dealing with folks, for instance, who are making food in a restaurant, I would tell you that one of the roles you may have to frequently deal with is that role in the right hand column being a negotiator typically being a negotiator perhaps between two employees who simply don't get along. That may be a negotiator or even a disturbance handler, right? That you are typically going to be involved in those kinds of things. Maybe they don't really agree upon scheduling decisions and this person always seems to get the schedule that I would prefer to have, etc. right? Whereas contrast that if you are the chief executive officer of a multinational corporation. How many times a day or a week will you have to handle disturbances? Well, quite frankly, probably not that much compared to your role as, for instance, being the spokesperson for the entire corporation to the press, to the media, to the outside world when something goes right or something goes wrong, right? So as you can see there, while many managers have to deal with many of these roles simultaneously, it differs depending where you are in the organization, your level, as well as your functional area. Let me see if I can give you a couple of examples. This is Tony Hayward, 
who is no longer the chief executive officer of British Petroleum, but he certainly was in 2010. Some of you may be familiar in 2010 with an incident in the Gulf of Mexico called the Deepwater Horizon oil spill. Deepwater Horizon was a uh, at sea drilling platform that was being run and managed and owned by British Petroleum. And there was an enormous, enormous oil spill. And at that point, when you're overseeing, if you're the chief executive officer of a multinational oil company and you have a multi-million gallon spill in the Gulf of Mexico, I would argue in terms of the roles you're supposed to fulfill, you got one job. Your job is to be the spokesperson. And as a spokesperson for British Petroleum, you got one job, which is to basically say, we're sorry this happened. We will make it right. We will bear the costs of everything necessary to make it right, and we will make sure it never happens again. That's your only job, right? If you're the CEO of British Petroleum, that's your only job. Well, what did Tony Hayward do instead? The first things that Tony Hayward did as soon as the spill came to the public light was he denied, denied, denied that we had anything to do with it, that it was our fault, it was somebody else's fault. And when things got really bad, here's what Tony Hayward actually said. He said, you think you got it bad? I want nothing more than for this to be taken care of. I want my life back. He actually said that to the press. To which then President Obama said, if he was working for me, he wouldn't be working for me. Something along those lines, basically. And as a result, Tony Hayward quietly moved aside. He was moved aside and is no longer the CEO of British Petroleum. And to that, I would say, dude, you had one job. Your one job was to say, we're sorry, we'll make it right. This is our fault, whatever it costs, we're gonna clean it up. That was your only job and you blew it. Sometimes the CEO only has one real role, one managerial role, you better get it right. <laughs> well, that's just one example. Let me give you another example. This is Brian Moynihan, the current CEO of Bank of America. The reason he's smiling in this photo, well, he's got an enormous amount of reasons to smile because when Brian Moynihan was appointed the CEO of Bank America, Bank America was in the middle of the worst financial crisis that the world has ever seen. That, would, of course, would be the global economic meltdown of 2008 and 2009. Many of you remember of it. Many of you were personally affected by it and your families were personally affected by it. We all remember the global economic meltdown of 2008-2009. Well, I personally remember that because at one point in time, Bank America stock was about $54 a share. That's a pretty good stock price, $54 a share. If you own Bank America stock at $54 a share, then you're saying, huh, should we have cracked crab or lobster for dinner tonight? Huh, why don't we have both? <laughs> Well, shortly after that in 2009, specifically in March 2009, the global economic meltdown hit in such a way that the stock price of Bank America dropped from $54 a share to $3 a share. $54 a share to $3 a share. Now, if you own a bunch of Bank America stock that just dropped from $54 to $3, you're no longer asking, shall we have cracked crab or should we have lobster? What you're asking instead is, why are you want top ramen? Top ramen is for Sundays only. It's mac and cheese again tonight, kids, right? Well, that's exactly when Brian Moynihan was appointed the CEO of Bank America. The previous CEO, who under his watch, stock price had crashed from 54 to $3 a share, he went bye-bye. He was let go, and Brian Moynihan instead was put in place, and he had to make some very significant decisions. He had to decide what is the new strategy of Bank America going to be in order to pull us out of this horrible spiral we're in. And Brian Moynihan made some very, very interesting decisions. What he actually decided 
was that rather than all of the previous things that Bank America had, had been focusing on, which was a lot of it was buying other financial institutions to grow by acquisition, he said, we ain't going to do that no more. We're stopping that. In fact, we're going to sell off most of those acquisitions and divisions. And instead, we are returning to another strategy. What is that strategy? We are going to pay attention primarily to our retail customers who do banking with us in Bank America branches. Now, if you think about that for a moment, that's probably the least glamorous, least interesting strategy that you could ever put in place as a multinational banking company like Bank America. But guess what? Here in 2020, the stock is back up to about between $25 and $28 a share. Will it ever go back to 54? I don't know. But right now, Bank America is one of the strongest banks in the world, primarily because of the leadership of Brian Moynihan. What do we look at when we see Brian Moynihan? Successful execution of managerial roles. He made the right decisions. He made the right call and he put them in place, as opposed to Tony Hayward of British Petroleum, who could not properly fulfill the role he was called to fulfill, and that's why he's no longer the CEO of British Petroleum. So from these two examples, you may see the major roles that managers are intended to fulfill, sometimes simultaneously, and you can at least identify two examples of effective and ineffective role execution. Now, one of the things I would ask you then to sort of put in your thinking cap, maybe it's at your previous job, or maybe your current job, or maybe when you read about companies in the newspaper. When you think about leaders making decisions and fulfilling roles and being the spokesperson or being a liaison or being a negotiator or being a decision maker. Think about the different roles that different managers have to fulfill at different times, at different levels and different functional areas of the organization. And now you can consider, is that manager fulfilling that role well or are they doing it not so well? Now here's another way to look at management in the real business world. I hope that's helpful. We'll see you in the next video.